Hey everybody, today is going to be the first lecture in a series of sort of shorter lectures on what I call DC circuit analysis. DC standing for direct current. Current moving in a single direction. Uh, usually as we say from positive to negative. Um, and then we're going to, so what I'm going to do, we're going to start off with just the idea of a simple circuit and how that looks and how we understand what's really going on there and how to measure stuff within a circuit. Then we'll look later on at what's called a series circuit a parallel circuit, and then something called a complex circuit. Now, to begin with, in order to understand truly what's going on in a circuit, all circuits have to obey two principles or two very important laws of physics. Conservation of energy and conservation of charge. And these dictate what's going on within the circuit itself. Now, to begin with, we're going to look at a simple circuit. And a simple circuit to remind you is one that's made up with a single voltage, a single current, and a single resistance. Now to understand circuits we're going to look at also something called a circuit diagram. And understanding a circuit diagram, this is sort of you know a blueprint of a circuit, uh, we need to look at some sort of terminology here, or some symbology really. Um, in a typical circuit, an EMF, a source of voltage, is often represented like this. Okay. This represents your EMF, your voltage, your source, where the long bar represents the positive end and the short bar represents the negative end. Um, sometimes it's drawn in many circuits as just one set like that. I was taught the other way. I'll do both. That's how we show a voltage source, like a battery or a plug in a wall, something like that. A current is simply drawn as an arrow showing which direction the current is traveling through the circuit. And then any resistance, which could be a light bulb or a toaster or anything like that, anything that's going to use the electricity, uh, is drawn with this sort of squiggly looking line. Okay, so those are the three parts, voltage, current, and resistance. So down here, what you see was what looks like a simple circuit, one that contains a single voltage, a single resistance, and the current flowing through it. Now, to begin with, the idea of conservation of charge. What that's saying is that whatever current leaves the voltage source must also return to the voltage source. Okay? So whatever current leaves the positive must return to the negative in its entire amount. We cannot lose charge along the way. Even though we're going to run things, do stuff like that, the current remains constant when we consider the beginning and the end. Now, it can divide up and change directions and do a lot of other things, um, but in the end, whatever leaves must return. That's where conservation of charge comes into play. The conservation of energy part, well, remember, it is our resistor that uses the energy. And the way we're going to apply conservation of energy is through something called a voltage drop. In other words, what conservation of energy is saying that your source of energy is your voltage. So whatever volts you start with at the one end, you must end up with zero at the end. You must drop or use all the voltage along the way. And our voltage drop, which I'll sometimes just label as VD, is going to occur here, typically. Now, in reality, it's dropping all throughout the circuit because the wires have some resistance, things like that. But the main voltage use or drop is going to occur at the resistor. Now, how do we really understand or know that's truly happening? Well, what we do is we have a couple of devices that will allow us to measure things if we need to. One particular device is called an ammeter. This is designed to measure current anywhere in the circuit. The other, as you may guess, is a voltmeter. And this is designed to measure our voltage drops between any locations in the circuit. Now, let's look at how we do that on a simulation. Okay, so here we have our circuit. Now, as you can see, no current is flowing because the switch is open. Because once again, a reminder, in order to have current flow in a circuit, 
you have to have a complete path from the positive to negative. Any break in the path will prevent any current flow. So if we close the switch, now we get our current flow here. Okay, so we have a 12 volt source and we have a 6 ohm resistor. Now one of the ideas of course is to understand the current at any particular point. Well to do that we're going to use this little device called an ammeter. Now how are we going to measure? Well we can't just you know do anything right here. We've got to make the ammeter part of the circuit in order to make this actually work. So for example, notice if I attach my ammeter right here coming out of the battery, it says that there is a 2 amp current that is, that is flowing through the circuit at this particular point. Of course with another ammeter shows there's also 2 amps over here, okay, right before it hits this resisting device, whatever that may be. Now I add a third ammeter on this side of the battery, it also says 2 amps. So notice everywhere in the circuit, but particularly on either side of the voltage source, it shows that I have 2 amps of current running through that. So clearly I'm obeying conservation of charge. Whatever amount of current charge is leaving the circuit is traveling and returning back to the voltage source. Now notice that I have to put the ammeter in the circuit. Okay, In order to measure current, my ammeter has to be inside the circuit. Okay? And that makes sense because the current needs to actually flow through it in order for you to actually measure it. Now the term we're going to use is that the ammeter must be placed in series with the circuit. It has to be part. The current has to pass through it. Now, one thing you notice that in order for the current to pass through it and not be affected, the resistance of any ammeter has to be extremely low. Because if it was had a high resistance, that would actually change the current value. So the resistance of the ammeter is very, 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 very low. Now, what about voltage? Well, this is an interesting thing. So what I've got here is a voltmeter. Okay, now it looks kind of different than the ammeter. It's got these two little probes here. Well, it turns out what I can do is I can take the probes and I can touch them to any location. And you'll notice it's telling me that I am dropping 12 volts from this side of the resistor to this side of the resistor. Now, I have a 12 volt battery, so that means that resistor is dropping all of my voltage. Okay, so that says what the voltage drop is across that resistor, that I'm using all the voltage there. You see, if I try to put it here, well, because we're having, quote, perfect wires, it's not dropping any voltage. There is no voltage drop. Okay, so the voltage drop clearly occurs at the point of the resistance. That's where our energy is used. Okay, and so I have to place it right there, and that shows me I drop all 12 of my volts. So to show the voltage drop, notice I had to place my voltmeter kind of like this. In other words, I had to put it in something that we're going to call parallel to the thing that I'm measuring the voltage drop on. Okay? And what it does, see, it measures the voltage difference between this location and this location. So here, in that example, I started off with 12 volts, but here I have 0 volts because I've dropped all 12 between those points, and that's what it measured there. Now, the resistance of a voltmeter has to be unbelievably high because what we don't want actually is current to bleed off into that voltmeter um, and change what we're actually measuring. And so that allows the current to continue to flow normally through the resistor uh, because current will always want to go the path of least resistance. And that kind of makes sense. If you had two water pipes and you have a really big one and a very tiny one, all the water is going to want to go through the very big pipe. It's just easier. Now with that in mind comes an interesting idea. Um, over here on the left, let's say I've got, again, a voltage, a resistance, and a current. Okay. But what if I was to suddenly take another wire and connect it across these two wires? Now, if you think about it, that lone wire probably has a really, really low resistance. Okay. So what that immediately does is drops the resistance down extremely low which brings my current up not only very high, but sends it all the way down this wire. Okay? And that bypasses the resistor. 
Um, and this is what is commonly known as a short circuit. Now you often hear about short circuiting things. Um, and you know, I love how they do that in the movies all the time. They'll somebody will somebody clamp a wire one place or another to short out whatever it is. In other words, you're bypassing it electrically so it can no longer run. Now there's a little bit of a danger with that. Um, you'll notice right here uh, in my circuit, I've got my normally running circuit here, you know, two amps of current going through, six ohm resistor, 12 volt battery. And now I've got this other bare wire here that I'm going to connect right across here. Ooh, look what happened. Um, again, what happens is I short circuited the wire. So no longer, the electricity no longer really will flow through here, um, through this top thing. Um, you'll notice it's not dropping all the voltage here, and I'm getting a huge current. Let's say it's a little glitching out, but um, and it's saying that it's setting everything on fire, and that's the danger of short circuiting things. When you do that, that automatically increases the current that's able to come out of whatever your voltage source is. So don't short circuit things. It's very, very dangerous. Ah, there we go. That's much better. Now, the key to dealing with circuits is going to be Ohm's law, V equals IR. That's going to help us throughout most everything that we need to do when dealing with the circuit, unless we're asked about power and then we have to use Joule's law, P equals IV. But understanding the two principles of conservation of energy, voltage drop, and conservation of charge, whatever current leaves the voltage has to return, will allow us to really understand what's going on in these different types of circuits. Okay, so that's just a short introduction to what circuitry is about and what it's going to look like. Keep in mind the symbols we're going to use for voltage source in a circuit diagram, uh, those sort of little lines there for voltage. Current is simply an arrow showing the direction, the squiggly line for resistances. Uh, if we ever go to measure currents, we have to put ammeters in series, and to measure voltage drops, we have to put a voltmeter in parallel to the resistor that is dropping the voltage. Conservation of energy says I must drop all my voltage between the beginning of the voltage and the end. And conservation of charge says whatever current leaves has to come back. See you next time.